Hello and welcome to the channel. It's Friday evening, mid-October, and this evening I'm in the workshop preparing the tackle and bait ready for tomorrow's fishing session. The place that I'm going to fish tomorrow is Brown Down Camp, or the beach in front of Brown Down Camp, and this is a new mark for me. I haven't fished it before. I've spoken to a few people, um, and a few friends have given me some pointers, some tips, and a specific area to fish. I'll be going there tomorrow, setting up, getting everything ready, and at some point during the middle of the session my brother's going to come and join me. Uh... I've been looking forward to this one particularly for this past week. Looking forward to, um, did all the planning planning, bait selection, rig selection, made up and revised my rigs last night, spoke to the local tackle shop about tactics, methods and bait, got a nice cross section of bait, Just pretty much hoping sand deals are going to do it today, but I've got some squid, I've got a mackerel that I'll get six baits out of, and then I've got ragworm as a backstop, seem to struggle getting hold of lugworm, on the right now, I think this is an Elmore, we'll soon find out in a minute, Elmore Fishing or Angling Club. And this is the car park, the paying display. Pretty much here. See how much the parking's going to fleece me. Elmore, yeah, Elmore Pay and Display, Gosport Borough Council. A couple of pickups and a van, looks like there's going to be some more people fishing. I'm guessing. Myself a ticket. Well, I'll get myself a ticket. <laughs> all clamped or whatever, or all of the above. Got to make sure this the fishing wagon is parked right up close because it's a long old beast and the back end sticks out. We've arrived at the car park. I've got all my gear together. It's only a small trudge today. Small shingle trudge, not too far. Should be pretty hard packed. It stopped raining. Um, and it all looks good. Soon get back down to the beach. See you I'm at the foreshore at Brown Brown Down Camp, and it's just worth mentioning that there is a military range at the back of Brown Down. So if the red flag's flying at this position here, you can't actually proceed any further. There's no flag flying today, so it's all good. And hopefully, I can fish without getting shot. It's funny, and I don't know if anyone else does this, but even though I've got two rods and two reels. I always put the same reel on the same rod and it just feels wrong if that reel goes on the wrong rod. I don't know if that's a little bit of OCD kicking in but I can't help myself. There is no way that this reel is going on the blue rod, black rod all the time. Today I'm going to be using the clip down panel rig. Um, I've got two rig bodies on this winder. It makes for an easy setup but I've also put my hook lengths on a separate winder because I've made four hook lengths specifically for these bodies. The reason why I've done that is so that I can always have two baited up, baited up and ready to go. So I'll get this on, I'll get the first one baited up and out in the water fishing before I carry on and set up the second rod. Because the tide's in flood and there's no wind and it is so calm out there, I'm going to go for 125 gram grip lead. If it doesn't hold bottom then I've got the next couple of sizes up as well. But I want to fish as light as possible that's just required to hold the bottom here. It doesn't look like there's much moving, but I start off low and if it doesn't hold, I can always go up. I am actually targeting for a ray today. I don't know if that's going to actually happen, but that's what I'd like to catch. That is the plan. Um, and because they're colour coordinated on the winders, and because I've got two hook traces the same, I know that this, this other one is a perfect match for this one. All the background work was already done yesterday, yesterday in the workshop, ready for today to make it as simple as possible. Really? What I am going to do is I'm going to bait it, then attach it, and then thump it out. So I left my mackerel in the bag a little bit too long, and the nearest thing to being defrosted are the sand deal. Now I could put some ragworm out, but I'm fairly keen to get at least one bait out fishing for my target species for today. So. I'm going to leave the head on, but take the tail off. That can go for the crabs. 
and then to put the hook on simply bind the head with the 4 row move the panel out of the way come in through and out and that sits nicely like that good old bait elastic my brother's bought me this dispenser it's a really nice little thing really because it keeps it all nice and tidy and then we just whip the hook on go down the hook near the head and whip the hook on there back up it's not to be shy of the elastic the elastic does a good job and then off and that presents it like that probably easier to see against there with the hook and then the panel hook you bring down and I like to orientate the hook to roughly where I need it to be okay and then take two or three turns and position the hook so it's going to come out in the opposite direction to the first hook to the primary hook and out I don't know if you can see there I'll put it on the bait board but you've got one hook facing one way another hook facing the other and again just a little bit of elastic just to tidy everything up And also try to ensure that the the hooks don't turn too much now this has been blast frozen bait and even though it's not defrosted yet I can already feel it's going to be pretty soft when it does um, obviously there's different qualities of bait different colors but that is my sand deal presented on the line on the hook so that is the bait clipped up onto the weight, ready for casting out. We'll get it out and we'll be fishing. Give that lead a chance to settle before winding into it. You can already see that because the tide is still coming in, there's a slow left to right pull on it at the moment. I've also been able to see fairly close in, I think they're school bass, but there's fish feeding and breaching just on the surface, which is quite interesting to see. So this 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 quite lively, there's stuff out there at the moment. But it's time to get the second rod out. So both rods are fishing now, and as you can see, as it gets closer to higher tide, the bigger ships start to come in with the tide. And just offshore there, with people fishing, boat fishing pretty jealous really must be lovely to sit out there on the boat today but I think I've got a pretty good spot here as well nice and calm no rain bit of cloud cover zero wind and a really calm sea so all I've got to wait for now is for a bite and I think the only thing I can do to accelerate the chance of getting a bite is to put the kettle on because as every fisherman knows every fisherman knows as soon as you put the kettle on you get a bite so the baits are out, the rods are set, I'm good to go. Here fishy fishy, time to get the kettle on.
keeping an eye on my rods because as I said earlier, as soon as you either start making a brew or you've made a brew, pretty much you're guaranteed that's when you're going to get a bite. So if the fishing gods are watching, now's the time. Oh, good bits of kit these, I like them a lot. Gas lasts for absolutely ages because the pot itself focuses underneath um, to make sure you get all the benefit out of the heat. You hardly use any gas. I mean, I, I go motorbike camping um, and I'll be doing some fishing videos where I load up on the motorbike um, and, and we'll go out on some biking adventures that include a bit of fishing as well. The um, can't beat these, I like them a lot. Really cheap as well. I mean, I think the, um, the unbranded version that I've seen in a popular camping shop, I don't know if I'm allowed to say names and things like that, but um, it's not go indoors, put it that way. The um, all packs away nice and small. I'll leave that for now because I'll probably need a brew later on. Give myself a second chance at trying to force a bite. But the, um, no, really good, really like them. Nice to have a hot, nice hot brew, nice and quick. Put the stuff away and I'm good to go again. Might even treat myself to a chalky bicky. It would appear two things are happening. One, it's started to rain, and two, my brother's turned up. So that sort of says, Richard's bought the rain. It's got bragging rights, isn't it? I'm gonna give him some grief. He's gonna have to set up his shelter in the rain, I think. Yeah. I've had a couple little knocks on the right-hand rod. I have to have a quick look, see what's going on. So I'm being plagued a little bit by the weed. We've got that horrible red weed, the stuff, the really fine stuff. Um, there seems to be quite a lot of it about. I'm hoping that it's slack water. Um, we get a bit of respite. But having to change and check the baits about every 15 minutes. Uh, otherwise the baits are just getting loaded. We're bringing them back in and they're just covered in weed. So we're gonna keep battling on, but I've swapped one rod now onto a three hook flapper with multiple ragworm on each. So trying to edge my bets a little bit and Avoid the dreaded blank. One rod's still out for rays, um, and anything else it'll pick up as well. But one rod, I'm just going for everything. So there's a three hook flapper on there with ragworm, tipped off with either squid, squid or mackerel, little little thin slivers, um, and see how it goes. I've had a couple of bites on the three hook flapper rod already, but nothing really developed, and nothing at all on the on the rod with the with the bigger baits out. So the rain has come, as forecasted very fine there's still no wind but look. so totally admit to it I'm struggling at the moment we're getting absolutely beat up by loads of this red weed I think the storm last night dislodged it all we're just at slack tide now so hoping it'll ease off a little bit maybe on the ebb as soon as the side tide starts to run we might get a few more bites I've had a couple of little rattles on the three hook flapper nothing not even a touch on the sand eel or mackerel on the bigger rod um, with the bigger bait, sorry. So, we're gonna battle on. Just need to concentrate on saving the blank now. Nobody likes the blank. And I don't wanna go home without catching something. So, here goes. Still raining, by the way. So it's been really heavy going. Um, we're having to change baits about every 15 minutes. The, um, my brother has just managed the smallest, tiniest little school bass. 
I mean, he's perfection in miniature, but it's not exactly what we've been after. So I'm gonna go and let this one go, put him back. But um, yeah, it's been, it's been hard work, to be honest. Weed is covering the bait. The weed's covering the bait, you can't catch the fish, so the fish are obviously there. So, coming to the end of that session, and <laughs> to be honest, it hasn't been the best. Been plagued by red weed. I'm sure someone, if you could comment in the comments below and let us know what that is. Um, red and stringy, sticks to your line, sticks to your hooks. And if your hook bait's covered in weed, there's not much chance of catching anything. Through sheer perseverance, Richard caught that little school bass. Um, I had a couple of little rattles early on in the session. I'm guessing they were small school bass as well. But other than that, I had nothing. Drawn a blank. Absolutely devastated. Worth thinking and uh, sort of reflecting on why, really. So, it wasn't through lack of preparation. It wasn't through lack of bait. Had a good mix of bait. Mackerel, squid, sand deal and ragworm all of which have been tried, all of which have been used. So I don't think it's bait. The weed, yeah, it's plagued us, it's been difficult, having to change the baits like every 10 to 15 minutes. And it just wasn't long enough for the baits to soak, I don't think. So as soon as you saw that change in rod tip, so your rod tip sort of sat there and happy, and then as soon as it sort of starts pulsing, that's when you knew it had weed on it. Yeah, and you reel it in, everything's covered in weed. And to be honest, the hooks have been picked clean. I went down to the water's edge earlier on and just put my hand in the water and it's actually quite warm. It's about 12, 11, 12 degrees today by the forecast and the water temperature is warmer than that. So I think it's the crab are pretty active to be honest. If 10 to 15 minutes to soak your bait brings back clean hooks, um, you're struggling to keep, keep a bait on the bottom. You keep struggling to keep a bait in the water for a fish to find. So, that's pretty much it for today. A little bit disappointing, but still a learning curve. And still, this is a venue I haven't fished before. I'm not 100% sure that I am in the best spot. There's no one else here. That can always be a teller. Um, if there's no one else here, and it's not that popular, is it that good? But then there's also the other aspect to it. And that is, there are loads of boats just offshore. So they're fishing for something and I'm pretty sure they're, they're fishing for rays. But I'm still glad I come out. It got me out of the house for the day. Gave me a couple of days of anticipation, looking forward to coming out. And I'm sure I'm gonna come back again and give it another go. So for now, bye. Um, please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. I'm sure you don't wanna see more videos where I blank. So we'll do our best to catch more. Um, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Bye for now.